you're welcome to my channel in this video we are going to be introducing topic 5 business research skills which is called population and sampling in our previous videos we talked about the fourth topic which was research design so in this video we shall be introducing population and sampling we shall start by defining what a population is a population is the entire group of elements the entire group of elements or the whole set of observations, the entire group of elements, things, events, or people that is of the interest of the researcher. That's what we call population, the whole thing. Yeah, An element is a single member of the population. That's what we call the element. Then sampling, it's the process of selecting units from a population of interest process of selecting units from a population of interest or it's the process of selecting a sample from a population. Yeah. It can be people, items and organizations. Yeah. From a population of interest so that by studying the sample we may fairly generalize our results back to the population from which they were chosen. Yeah, some, some sometimes you cannot study the whole population in order for you to get what you want. So you have to pick a sample, something that, that can make your work easier. You have to pick a sample so that it can help you generalize the results later. So let's look at the sampling techniques. There are two sampling techniques. We have the probability sampling techniques, also known as random sampling techniques. Then we have the non-probability sampling techniques yeah those are the two sampling techniques that we have probability and then non-probability yeah so we are going to look at each each of them in details so we shall start with the probability sampling method this method utilizes some form of random selection random means something like just we already say that another name for probability sampling method is random sampling method. Yeah, so it involves selecting things by chance. And in order for you to have a random selection method, you must set up some process or procedure that assures that the different units in your population have equal probabilities of being chosen. For example, if you toss a coin, both sides have equal probabilities of being chosen. It's either a head a tail yes yeah, so that, that, that's what we call random selection method both sides have equal probabilities of being chosen and in probability sampling method each element has equal chance of being selected and the size of the population is known under probability sampling method we have a number of types and the first one is called simple random sampling Simple random sampling, here all elements have an equal chance to be representative and all elements are part of the population. An example can be to choose a random group of 10 students from a class of 30. A random group of 10 students, if you're choosing randomly, it means that you can choose anyone. Yeah, you can choose anyone, so all elements have an equal chance to be chosen. That's what we call simple random sampling. Then the second one is called systematic random sampling. Here the sample is chosen systematically by choosing the nth start and the nth element. Yeah, you choose maybe item number two and every second item is chosen. Yeah, in a very big class on every desk you'll be choosing the second student, your second student or second student, and those are the students that you, you will use as your sample. Another technique is called stratified random sampling. Here the population is divided into strata using either proportionate or non-proportionate stratification. It is mainly used where the population to be considered does not have homogeneous characteristics like the same characteristics or similar characteristics, especially to cater for all the different characteristics of the population. That's when we use stratified random sampling. In stratified random sampling, since the population doesn't have similar characteristics, 
the population is divided into groups of similar features and then elements are drawn from each group to come up with a sample with all features. Yeah, the general procedure for stratified random sampling. The first one is stratify the population. Identify the different proportions in the population, stratas with similar characteristics. That is the first step. Then the second step, after identifying the different proportions in the population, you split the population into different stratas. Stratas is something like groups. Yeah, into different stratas. Then the, sec the third one is to calculate the proportion to the sample with each stratum is expected to contribute. And lastly is to take the sample. So those are the four steps used in stratified sampling. You first stratify the population, identify the different proportions in the population. Then you split the population into different stratas. After you calculate the proportion to the sample with each stratum is expected to contribute. And then lastly, you take the sample using the simple random sampling from each stratum. Another probability sampling technique is called cluster sampling. This is where a sample is drawn by selecting a subsection of a population. Subsection, it can be men, women, children, old people, youth, things like that. Cluster sampling is a sampling technique used when natural groupings are evident in a statistical population. Like you, you can see just by looking at the population that these are men, these are women, these are children, these are youths. These are all people. Yeah, so it is used when natural groupings are evident in a statistical population. It is often used in marketing research. In this technique, the total population is divided into groups or clusters, and a sample of the group is selected. Yeah. Then the required information is selected from the elements within each cluster or within each selected group. Yeah, it is mainly used in marketing research because you will you will want to know your target market. Are they the youths? Are they the children? Are they the old people? Are they women or men? Yes, yeah, so that is what we call cluster sampling. And the cluster sampling, we have the single stage cluster sampling and the two stage cluster sampling. In the single stage cluster sampling, all elements from the selected clusters are used. While in the two stage cluster sampling, a random sampling technique is applied to all elements from each of the selected clusters. Another technique we have is area sampling. This relates to the geographical locations as you hear area. When cluster sampling is based on geographical subdivisions, it is known as area sampling. For example, if you are to consider districts from east to represent the whole country, maybe if you are to consider the whole of Nakawa to represent Kampala, that's what we call area sampling. Then lastly, we have mild stage sampling. Here we use more than one sampling technique to come up with a more reliable sample. That's the reason why it's called mild stage sampling. You use more than one sampling technique. Yeah. And that was all about the probability sampling technique. Yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share with your friends and watch my next video. We shall be talking about the non-probability sampling techniques.